I took a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night So I started running so I wouldn't be too late Welcome everyone to Coaching a Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about culture, individual culture and collective culture. And the idea came to me when I was speaking with someone and they were talking about how the individual culture has kind of went away, shied away from where it was and it's kind of moving into a collective form and culture. So it was interesting to me when he said that because I was like, not many people talk about this idea, about the idea of culture, but not culture in the sense of Hispanic culture, African American culture, European culture, all the different types of cultures that we can possibly look at, we don't. Because now we kind of conform. Before we would be with our groups. So you would, of course, if you were raised Puerto Rican, you would be raised to think like a Puerto Rican, be like a Puerto Rican, eat like Puerto Rican. And that culture made you who you are. It gave you a sense of community, and it also gave you a sense of individualism. But society has kind of moved away from that after you have the community-based collective culture growing up. Because if we know anything about raising children growing up, the development of the brain, it's that we have a tribe-like mindset. That means our mindset is going to be more interested in trying to figure out, okay, how can I make this work? Not just for me, but for the group. And you do that growing up. Parents, they have to sacrifice so much for their kids. And it's not that the kids are at fault. The kid never asked to be born. It was the parents wish to have that child. So now the parents have to take responsibility. Most parents take the responsibility. Now, going down that path of raising a child is different because you are going to be working with other individuals, whether it be your partner, whether it be the teachers at the school, whether it be the coaches at their sports camp or their sports activities, it could be family members. I mean, you name it, there's going to be some influence on that child and that child's going to learn to be in a group. There's nothing wrong with being in a group, especially if you're part of a congregation, a church, and you're trying to create that community, trying to create that awareness for that child. And then the child can grow and then they can make their own choices. But they have that in the beginning, that collective type of culture. Somewhere down the line, We gather enough information though, and we say, you know what? I have enough information. I'm going to be individual from what I was, from what I was taught to be. And you start to look at yourself. You start to see what you want, what you need. And of course, family might always play a pivotal role in being a collective type of mindset. But when you take the family aspect out and you start to look at your life, it typically happens around the teenage years. It could happen a little bit later too. Now, When that happens, we start to get a jumble of cultures mixing together. And it's very fast. It happens very quickly because you say what you want, but then you also have the brain's development, that peer acceptance, that those limiting beliefs that we were given. All of those play a role in our mindset. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my most recent blog, Individual versus Collective Culture. And then we're going to be breaking that down. So let's get into that blog right now. All right, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and to also head over to reverendconcepts.com where you're going to be able to find this recent blog, which is Individual and Collective Culture. And you can easily get this blog going to the website, going to the resources tab, heading over to blogs, and then it will be right there in front of you. If you're listening to this podcast, it's also in the description box below, so you can easily get to this blog and read it. The idea of individual and collective culture is going to be talking the simplicity of how you can live your life. Do you want to live your life by yourself? Do you want to live your life worrying about your own needs? Or do you want to worry about other people? What other people are doing? What other people think about you? And I think that last part, what other people think about you, is a critical factor in collective culture. Because if you were just individual culture and you did your own thing, you would go so much more Not saying you don't need people, but saying that individual culture helps you be more efficient. Now, collective culture, on the other hand, can have its benefits. Team members, right? You have confidants. You have people you can rely on, people you can put faith in, trust, right? 
Now, today, trust can only go so far because people are so quick to insert their opinions as truth, and then that truth becomes their word, and then the word becomes their trust, right? If someone is saying this is that or this is this, then are we supposed to believe them if we have a collective culture mindset? Of course, right? Especially if that person has a higher status in our group. So, for example, let's say we are at school. There's always a leader of the pack maybe a popular kid, right? There might be multiple popular kids, but there's going to be one kid, maybe two, that are going to stand above the pact. It happens in the workplace. It happens in your regular type of friendships, families, and that kind of goes into the mindset. What type of mindset do you have? Me, I'm very stubborn. Typically, when I'm in a group, people look at me, and it's not that they look at me saying, okay, we need you to tell us what to do they're more interested in hearing what I have to say. And when I say what I say, they can say, okay, that makes sense. Or they can rebuttal, right? The people I put myself around, they are critical thinkers. So it's not going to be a herd mentality where I say something and then a horde of people follow me. I don't want you to follow me blindly. I want you to come up with your own conclusions. Collective culture sometimes takes that away from people. Coming up to your own conclusion, worrying about what other people think, Versus, what do I think? What do I want? What do I need? And the main focus of individualistic culture is that you don't need to worry about the needs of others overall. In the blog, I even say this, parents. If you have parents, right? Do you worry about your parents? Yes, right? You should worry about your parents, especially after they raised you, they took care of you. When you think about it, if you ever took care of a baby, an infant, they're useless. They can't do anything. They can't feed themselves. They can't change themselves. They need a human adult. They need someone to take care of them. Okay, so it's not like, oh, I don't owe anything to my parents. They sacrifice so much. Parents sacrifice so much for their child. And children sometimes don't see it until they have their own children. I'm a testament of that. I knew how difficult it was to raise children. Even being a teacher, I knew the aspects of parenting and teaching. But it wasn't until I had my own where I said, whoa, this is different. This is an eye-opening experience where it's like you have to worry about another human being and you don't have a choice really. So it's like, okay, I know I want a family. I know I have to do this. What do I have to do in order for to make this work, right? What do I have to give up? Do I have to stop working as much? Do I have to hire a nanny? What do I need in order to be successful in this type of uh, endeavor of parenthood? Well, it's going to take... A collective type of mindset. You're doing it for the group, looking at your partner, saying, okay, what needs to be done? How can we make this work? All of that plays a role. Now, if you're by yourself, you can still have a collective type of culture. If you have your mom, now she's grandma. If you have your dad, he's grandpa. Maybe the other side of the family, same thing. Maybe you have no one. Worst case scenario, you have no one and you have to raise a child by yourself. You're going to be leaning on teachers. You're going to be leaning on coaches. You're going to be leaning on people to help you raise this child. If you don't have those main players like grandma and grandpa in the picture, it's more difficult, but it's still doable. There's still sacrifice that you make. There's still an awareness that you have to maintain. And collective culture is creating that awareness of other people. Because in individualistic culture, we don't have to worry about anyone. I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to worry about my neighbors. I don't have to worry about whoever I don't want because I'm worried about me. And you might think, oh, that's very selfish. You're being selfish. You're being immature. It's not. When is self-care being selfish? I need self-care. Is that selfish? But when you add parents into the mix and you add kids into the mix, self-care is considered selfish then, right? Culture define self-care as selfish in that aspect. Oh, I need some self-care. Well, your child needs care too. So you have to figure out before we go on, what are those main things that you cannot separate from? If you're a parent, most likely it's going to be your child, right? Maybe family, if you're really tight and close-knit to your family, especially if you grew up in an Italian, Spanish home where they are really strong into culture and family bond which is a good thing. Strong family creates strong minds. A weak family is going to create fragile minds and those fragile minds are going to need coaching or they're going to need some guidance because they're going to be filled with limiting beliefs 
They're going to be filled with insecurities, doubts, and fears. So it's going to be difficult if you have that type of mindset, that negative type of mindset to be an individualistic type of person, even though you didn't have that collective culture growing up. What tends to happen is that many people are going to shy away from the individualistic culture and go into the collective culture, especially if they didn't have anyone in the beginning. And this blog goes through step by step how we are going to be talking about individualistic culture and collective culture. And I'm going to be breaking down that even more right now. I want to make this very clear. Having a collective type of mindset is not a bad thing. Having an individualistic culture is not a bad thing. It's preference, right? For example, you have a toolbox in your garage. You have different bits and pieces, right? You have different tools. You have a screwdriver. You have a hammer. You have nails and you have screws and you have drills. You have a saw. There's a tool for any task or a better tool for any task. Can you use a saw to hammer a nail in? You probably could. Is it more effective than a hammer? Probably not. Common sense, right? In the sense of collective culture, that mindset, it takes that away because it kind of takes away that common sense aspect because collective culture is kind of like, oh, is this going to work for the group? Okay, well. If someone else wants to use the hammer, I'm going to let them use the hammer and I'm going to do the best I can with what I have. Now, you know a hammer is going to be more effective, but you're willing to give that hammer up to someone else. Not saying that generosity is not part of collective culture or individualistic culture. And it's an interesting way of thinking when you figure out that you're more inclined to give someone the better tool, the better option, and then you take the latter, right? You take the lesser option. Not saying that being nice is not a bad thing. But we have to learn that when you're having a collective culture mindset, you're worrying about a lot of other people, a lot of other factors that might not be conducive to your happiness, that might not be conducive to your joy, your fulfillment, or your goals. So when we are mixing the two, individualistic culture and individual culture, there is a fine balance. There we go again with balance, right? There is a balance in what we do and how we operate. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't lean to one more than the other. For me, I'm more individualistic than collective. Yes, I have a team. I have employees and they help me out tremendously. I'm so grateful to have them. But at the same time, if I didn't have them, could I do the work? And I was listening to this book. It was called Million Dollar Habits. And one of the things in the books that rang out to me was that we delegate work. And I'm very good at delegating work. If I can see someone else can do this job, I'm going to give it away. And if they can do better than me, I'm going to give it away. Whether it be editing, whether it be mowing the lawn, I mean, you name it, going to the grocery store. If they can do it better than me, why not let someone else do it? Let me do what I want to do. Let me do what I was meant to do. Because when you're not doing what you were meant to do, then you're doing the things that you weren't meant to do. So in a sense, you are not making the greatest impact as if you were doing the things that you were supposed to be doing, the things that filled you up. Because you might hate going to the grocery store. You might hate mowing lawn. You might hate painting. Why do the things you hate? Now, I do think that there's some good in doing things that you don't necessarily enjoy because it kind of gives you the awareness, right? It's that yin and that yang, that good and that bad, that push and that pull. It really gives you that awareness of, okay, I'm paying attention. Because if you just had good in your life, everything was good, there was no problems, we would make some problems for ourselves because that's what the brain wants. And when we have an individual type of mindset worrying about individual culture, we alleviate so many problems because something collective culture does is they look at what you have. Okay, well, what type of car am I driving? Am I driving a Ferrari, BMW, Mercedes? Or am I driving a Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Ultima? That right there says a lot about a person. What type of car do you drive? What type of lifestyle do you have? And then we also have to look at, well, let me look at your house. What neighborhood do you live in? Oh, you live in the wealthy neighborhood. Oh, wow. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have big homes and they're very wealthy, very affluent. So you're already put on a skewer and they're trying to figure out where you belong. Okay, this person is part of the crowd. This person is a nobody. Let me not associate with them. That collective culture, that idea of looking at what people have, looking at other people's needs, it stops us from being our fullest self. But just because it stops us from being our fullest self, it doesn't mean it stops us from being fulfilled. There's a difference because 
yes, I might have to take care of my parents one day. They might have to live in the home with me. That's perfectly fine, right? It might take away from what I want to do or if I have to make sure things are going well. I understand at that point, that fulfillment of making sure my parents are taken care of is going to be better than if my needs were taken care of. I'm weighing out what is good and what is bad for me, what is necessary and what is not necessary. What we do is we fill our lives with a lot of unnecessary things. The car you drive, making that the aspect, oh, I have to drive this car because guess what? It's a status symbol. The clothes you wear, the bags you carry. And if you are a type of person who enjoys designer, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. But if you want to be caught dead with non-designer stuff, then you probably have an issue of collective culture where you're looking at this is what I need. Now, there's also an aspect of culture or your individualism that's going to come in. I do this for me. This makes me feel better. When I drive a BMW, I feel better. Why do you feel better? A car is meant to take you from A to B. So why do you feel better? It's not individualistic culture. It's collective culture playing a role, but you're just not paying attention to it. If you want to be caught dead in a certain type of car or in a certain type of outfit or bag or whatever, collective culture is ruling your brain. Again, not a bad thing. It's just you need to understand where you are so you can figure out where you want to be. Maybe where you want to be doesn't conform to what society says. Maybe you want to say, you know what? I want to be someplace different. I want to do something different. Where society's going, I don't want to go down. There's a lot of hoopla going on on the news and mainstream media with all of the negativities of the world, all of the problems, all of the threats, rising crime, rising bills. There's a lot of uncertainty going on and people are trying to figure out what's best for themselves. And of course, they're human and typically... When you have that human aspect, right, you have that social emotional type of thing where you look at someone, when you look at a life and you're like, okay, this is a life. Now, it might not be your crew. There's a difference, right? Because, for example, I'm going to use the hood, for example, if you got a gang, right, let's look at the Crips and the Bloods. The Crips might not like the Bloods. The Bloods don't like the Crips. But if there was ever an issue that was going against both of them, do you think a conversation will come up saying, hey, we got a common problem and we need to make sure that common problem doesn't interfere with what we have right now. And that's a problem with us, because when you're adding other people into the mix, it becomes difficult. And this is not to talk about gangs and rivalry, just to kind of give an example of people are going to have different opinions, different beliefs, perfectly fine to have them. Now, if you're going to be dealing with mixing the two, typically that's what happens. We are trying to figure out how to meet societal standards, how to conform to groups, and we are not afraid to give up whatever it is. What do I have to give up right now? Oh, I have to give up my freedom? Not a problem. I have to give up my way of thinking or my beliefs? Not a problem, right? Especially if it is to be accepted into the culture. Now, It takes a strong individual to have an individualistic mind. That mindset or that culture, that way of being can be looked at as selfish, can be looked at as wrong or insecure, maybe. I mean, there's so many negative aspects that can be thrown out for both of them, to be honest, because collective culture, you could be a sheep, you can be a follower, you could be a goody two shoes, a teacher's pet. I mean, the terms go on. I can label you just from being a certain type of mindset right? If you're pessimistic, if you're optimistic, right? If you're a doer, if you're a donter, all of these different aspects play a vital role in our growth and our development. But what we do have to realize from individual and collective culture is that when we're trying to get into a mindset that's going to help us reach our goals, there is going to be one or maybe the other, maybe both, right? that can play a better role. If you want to climb the corporate ladder, do you think a collective culture is going to be a better option than an individualistic culture? Maybe, right? There's going to be certain companies where collective culture reigns supreme. There's also going to be companies that individualistic culture is going to reign supreme. I need to make sure that my work is the best work because we're going off a work base. So if I shine, I succeed. Versus if my team shines, I look good. I succeed. I was the leader of my team. 
I make sure everyone in my team shines. You go up. So it depends on the situation. But it's difficult when we live in a world where opinions today are now beliefs. So I have an opinion about something and it's a belief. Okay, well, this is my truth. The problem is that sometimes people tell themselves a lie over and over again and it eventually becomes their truth. And we do that a lot with our negative emotions, our negative mindset, our negative way of thinking. I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. I'm not happy. All of those different things are weighing you down. And culture, society, makes it difficult to pay attention to yourself because it's frowned upon to do your own thing or to have free speech. It's frowned upon. So if you can't even be yourself, who should you be? And that's when the journey for enlightenment or the journey to find yourself comes into play. Because yes, you can figure out what you have to do. You can say, I'm an individualistic culture type of person, or I'm a collective culture type of person. This blog talks about the differences and it walks you through and gives examples on how many people kind of associate things with. Nothing wrong with being in a group, nothing wrong with being solo either, but you do have to figure out what's the end goal. What are you looking for at the end? Because sometimes you could be on a journey with someone eventually there's going to come a point where you might say, you know what, this journey, this path that this person's on might not be exactly how I would do it. So what do you do? Do you either continue, just kind of follow because it's easy to follow? Or do you say, you know, I'm going to jump ship and I'm going to say thank you for, you know, taking me along as far as you did. But now it's time for me to go alone. We all go on that individualistic culture journey at some point. It's just that we always find ourselves back in the collective culture aspect of our mindset because innately as humans we don't want to be alone we need security and security can be people it can be dealing with like-minded people but the problem with like-minded people is that that group that you're with might not have a good type of mindset yeah you have all the like-minded people who are fearful and cowardly and deceitful hateful but that doesn't bring about your dreams it doesn't bring about you rising up and shining You have to figure out what you need to grow. And I think this blog right here, Individual versus Collective Culture, is going to be a great starting point to help you understand what's going on in the world, what's going on in your mind, and what's going on in the community and society. All of those different aspects are going to help you reach a stronger and more in line mindset that's going to help you become fulfilled and then help you overall figure out exactly the next steps that you have to be making in your life. And your dreams, who you can become, it's up to you, right? You get to decide what you want for your life. What is allotted for you is what you decide. Sometimes people are so quick to say, well, this is what you get. This is what you have to do. This is who you are. When in reality, you can be anything you want. It's just sometimes you have to find the right group. So if you're in the wrong group, find a new group. If you want to have a collective type of culture as your primary source of fuel. If you want to do things by yourself, you can do that. But then don't be afraid to start a team too. If you're a CEO, if you're a successful businessman, you most likely understand the power behind collective culture. And you also understand the power behind negative collective culture. So if you see a group of people that are not helping you, then you're like, you know what? I can't be associated with these individuals. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that they're stopping me from reaching my goals. And goals should be a vital aspect in thinking about what type of culture should you be going in? And then understanding the two cultures, understanding where you should apply either of the cultures, and then understanding where you are today, because that's going to typically be your static standpoint. Do I typically go this way? What direction do I typically go? When you figure that out for yourself, then you can begin to make some changes. I always recommend a coach. A coach can help you get there a lot sooner. A coach is going to figure out that sometimes your friends are not your friends. Your friends are actually stopping you from living your full life. I have had clients who would tell me about their friends and they would say, these people have been with me for years, might be from elementary school, high school, right? And you're holding on to something that's not helping you. That collective culture should be let go of. Learning how to be that individual and then allowing people to come into your life and creating a new collective culture is going to be the best option for people who have those negative type of people in their lives right now. And sometimes you don't understand that they're negative. Maybe you need a coach to give you that clue saying, hey, this person might not be the best for you. Or maybe you can finally get to that point where your soul's offended, a trauma happens, and then you say, you know what, I'm going to make some changes. 
Typically, people choose the latter. They say, I'm going to wait for a trauma before I change. But you don't need a trauma to change. You don't need an issue to come up and for you to say, okay, I'm going to fix this. You have all the power right now to make the changes that you want for your life. And the only thing you have to do is pay attention to who you are right now, who you want to be for later, and then making those changes and committing to them. If you need help, of course, RevanConcepts.com. We can get you coaching and we can get you the help that you need in order to get the dreams that you want. It's only a step away. What culture are you? My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me coachingincession at gmail.com and I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching in Session. Until then, everyone take care.